foot long piece of copper tubing and jam it into a banana to make it go down a PVC tube seems really weird and crazy, but that is the life of Blue Man. Uh, we experimented with all kinds of things, oatmeal, millet, um, jello, a lot of things. What was wrong with all the other things is that air moves through it, so it wouldn't hold together so it could be pushed out. But the moment we jammed a banana in this tube, it, it kept the cell structure of the banana intact, so it could be pushed through with air and the banana was slimy and slippery. We really tried a lot. This is a, a point in time where we really did experiment a lot. Sometimes they're super ripe and yucky and there's stuff oozing out of them and it's just nasty. And sometimes they're perfect. Uh-oh, green bananas. Sometimes they're not ripe enough and I just have to walk around the building and yell that my bananas suck. These bananas suck. We didn't think of it for a while, but it takes a, some kind of tube that has almost like a, uh, the end of it is sharpened so that it will go into the tube easier. Teaching someone how to do it, was, that was probably what led to like actually making a tool that would make it easier because I, I, I thought, wow, I gotta make this easier for somebody else. It's okay for, for it to be hard for me to do this, but um, you know, somebody else, I just can't, I can't put this on them. The first versions of it were these, they were called Chapin sprayers. It's like what people in the pest industry use to spray like poisons, <laughs> you know, for roaches and stuff like that. So we would, before the show, we would pump these, these sprayers up. They were attached to these tubes with banana in them. And, um, you know, that's, that was how the, the first banana was pushed through tubes at Blue Man. <laughs> it was really hard work, and it took like an hour and a half. But it, would, it had a great payoff because it was such a surprise for the audience. This. this is why the new way exists, because that was gross. When I first started stuffing tubes, it was a whole different process. We'd cut off the tops of the bananas, and then we would attach a piece of conduit to the top of the tube, and we would just jam the banana in there, and, and it would take many, many bananas. And at that time, I think we used about a case and a half of bananas per set of tubes per show. And it took a long time, and it was very, very messy. The banana that I'm looking for when doing tubes the old way would be a banana that was more of this color and shape, but a little longer, preferably, so you can get more banana out of each coring. So when you're done stuffing the tube, then you take the tube and you roll it over itself to push it down through the tube itself to get it through the black area to the point where you can see it again, and then you're done. The new process of banana jamming came from my old supervisor, Michael Spatafora, which I will call Spat from this point on because he has a very long name. Um, Spat got tired of stuffing a copper pipe into bananas because we couldn't get a consistency of bananas. We would get them either really green, just right, spotty and brown, and when they're really green, it's kind of hard to jam anything into it, and when they're spotty and brown, you just crush them in your hand. So he got tired of doing that. So over the process of me stuffing tubes, he just started building this PVC thing. And we would just slowly prototype. He would build a piece, give it to me. I would use it, but like, this sucks, change this. And then he would change it and we would use it like, oh, this is awesome, but this doesn't work. So it was just a process of building and using until we got to the new banana jammer. All right, so I peel a lot of bananas. It gets boring, but uh, sometimes it has a very zen quality to it. And then I begin the actual jamming process. I have the banana fairy to keep me company. This is actually my job. In real life, this is my job. If you're stuffing for one show, they're all different lengths. So you have to watch them to make sure that you don't stuff 
one set too much. So I'm gonna disconnect my tubes. Plunge them down. Get them ready to put in the table. That's the day in the life of a banana jam. I was content for it to be so difficult to do, but when it came to passing it on to somebody else, I thought, wow, I've got to invent some other way of doing this. And I have a feeling that might be the same for, um, for a lot of people, like innovation probably comes from thinking, oh my God, somebody else has to, this has to be easier for the next person, you know? So I'm kind of being humorous a little bit, but I, hopefully I'm touching on what our culture is like, because I think it is filled with a lot of empathy, thinking about, you know, your fellow, fellow coworker, your fellow blue man a lot. So I, I think there probably is some, some truth to that, innovation through uh, empathy. I don't think a lot of people think of that as being a, uh, a motivation for, for uh, innovation, but at Blue Man Group, I think it's true. Oh, it means a lot of different things, because my job itself as being a supervisor now, it's been really interesting of knowing how everything functions and how things play with each other and working with every other department. Carpentry as itself can't exist by itself. I work close with props, but then I have to work with sound, video, and lighting, because we all we're also integrated within each other. And I think that's one of the most interesting parts because in most theaters, you can function by yourself. You can build a thing. I can, as a carpenter, build a set and be done. And then the lighting will come in and light the set. But here, you have to interact with everyone around you because if you don't, you can you just throw it out the window because it's not going to happen. So I think that's one of the best things that like there are a group of people who work with you and want to work with you and to make everything better than it was the day before. I taught a couple people to uh, banana jam. I love coming into the space every day. I've been working here for almost 19 years and um, it's great. It beats any alternative that I can think of. Definitely a family. I know that sounds cliche, but it is. Um, even more so because there's so many of us that have been around for so long. I mean, I work with people every day that I've been working with for 18, 15, 12, seven, you know, a, a long time. A lot of fun and, and it's exciting. I still enjoy the show. You know, I, I, as I'm doing my cues, at one point I drop stuff off in the laundry room and then I come around and I go back upstairs to go backstage and um, I get to see the whole audience doing this at the same time. And it brings a smile to my face every time. And now our banana jammer is ready to stuff some tubes. Waka waka. And that's the banana jammer. Subscribe and stay tuned for more exclusive videos and behind the scenes looks.